Alright, let's discuss extinction. Extinction of all mammalian life, including of course us. But in this case, this extinction will probably not matter much to us, because it's going to be happening in a far, far future. Nevertheless, trying to figure out when complex life goes extinct on planet Earth might actually help us understand a few other things in the process as well. So, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to be discussing a relatively recent study that in essence confirms that at some point in the future, most, if not all, mammalian life, including future humans, are going to go extinct and will not be able to survive on Earth no matter what. But I guess more surprisingly, they actually discovered that it might happen a lot sooner than anyone believed. And though by then we expect most of the complex life to potentially evolve into something entirely different, at some point in the future, the physical conditions on the planet are just going to be too extreme for any complex biological life, at least based on the current understanding of biology. And so let's discuss this particular study, relatively recently published in the Nature magazine, that to some extent predicts the demise of mammalian life on planet Earth and provides really intriguing explanation. And so what exactly is this paper all about? Well, it's really all about predictions on what happens to the planet every few hundred million years. Based on a lot of geological evidence, we know that once in a while, all of the continents on the planet create what's known as a supercontinent, which is obviously the result of what's known as plate tectonics, previously known as the continental drift. And the last time it happened was most likely approximately 300 million years ago. This was the supercontinent we refer to as Pangaea, and you can actually see some of the previous ones in one of the links in the description. So as you can see, approximately every few hundred million years, we actually get new supercontinents forming because of the plate tectonics. And based on the calculations we have today, it's most likely going to happen again anywhere between 100 to maybe 250 million years in the future. With one of the best known models, usually referred to as the Pangaea Proxima or the next Pangaea, although more commonly known as Pangaea Ultima, the next supercontinent that's expected to happen possibly in the next 250 million years. Once again based on the observations of how continents move around and what usually happens when they start colliding and interacting with one another. And so here if you look closely you'll see the outlines of the South and North America, we have the leftovers from Africa, and of course Europe and Asia here as well. Although here it's possibly going to have some kind of a large ocean or some kind of a large sea in the middle, something that we have seen before in previous iterations of previous supercontinents. Although once again this is based on geological evidence, not so much on physical observations. But the prediction model based on computer simulations right now is pretty strong. Although here a very important side note, there are other predictions and other simulations as well. We have a prediction for something referred to as Amasia, something that might actually even form within the next 100 to 150 million years. We have the so-called Novo Pangaea, although here it's based on a much older model, and we have something known as Aurica. Here is sort of the video showing us how all of this might assemble over time. And so quite a lot of these models exist, but most of them basically end with the same result. You do get some kind of a final supercontinent at the end that remains as a supercontinent for at least 100 million years, possibly longer. And the thing is, when supercontinents form, they all tend to have very similar climatic changes. Based on the studies from Pangaea, which existed 200 to 300 million years ago, we know that things generally tend to get much, much hotter. And really for one reason, carbon dioxide. Because the continents join together, and because there is not as much geological recycling, the CO2 levels in the air rise dramatically all the way to something like 2000 ppm, at least 5 times higher than right now. Which is exactly what's observed in various rock deposits discovered during the period when Pangaea was around. And this generally increases the average temperature by at least 10 degrees Celsius. On top of this, the sun is also slowly growing a little bit bigger and a little bit hotter. And by the time that the supercontinent is essentially complete, the emissions from the sun are going to be approximately 2.5% higher. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it's enough to dramatically shift the conditions on the surface. With all of this dramatically shifting the global climate and very likely creating unbearable conditions on the surface. At least unbearable for mammalian life. Here the mean temperature is expected to be approximately 46.5 degrees Celsius, 116 Fahrenheit. 
In comparison, the mean temperature on Earth today is only about 15 degrees Celsius, 30 degrees Celsius lower. And at these temperatures, most complex modern life would have a lot of trouble surviving. The vast majority of proteins, for example, would be completely denatured, resulting in the failure of metabolism or photosynthesis. And that means that mammals, that essentially dominated the planet for the past 55 million years, mostly because of their ability to adapt to many different climatic conditions, will very likely reach the physical limit when the Earth becomes just a little bit too toasty to survive. Although technically some of the first mammals appeared approximately 300 million years ago, potentially during the existence of Pangaea. And so maybe there is a way for some smaller animals, the ones that can burrow and hide inside somewhere, to survive on this super hot earth. But it's unlikely that the mammals are going to be dominant, and it's more likely that someone else that's able to tolerate such heat is going to become the dominant class. And even though mammals were able to survive most extinction events in the last 300 million years, the simulations from this paper suggest that by the time the supercontinent finishes forming, most of it is going to be just way too extreme. With something like 8% of terrestrial world still providing some support for complex mammalian life. And so by the time that the CO2 levels are about three times as high as they are today, most of the planet becomes completely uninhabitable. Or at least uninhabitable for anything living on the planet today. And although we knew that this is going to happen eventually, previous predictions suggested that we might have at least 1 billion years. Turns out that it might happen much sooner. Anywhere from 100 to maybe 250 million years, depending on which model of supercontinents is more likely to be correct. Now this one here suggests 250 million years, and that's the one that most scientists currently agree with. You can find the simulation in the description below. But it's unlikely to happen within the next 100 million years. In terms of our geological understanding, we know supercontinents will not be forming for at least 100 million years. So mammals definitely still have some time. And interestingly, quite a lot of studies suggest that evolution is not going to be fast enough at helping animals adapt to these new extreme conditions. And so a lot of the adaptation techniques and a lot of proteins that we use are just not going to be able to function in conditions that are that hot. Or at least that's one of the preliminary assumptions. Because as Jurassic Park taught us, life finds a way. There's still a chance that maybe some mammals might return back to water, just like dolphins and whales did back in the days, and might adapt to survive in the water instead. Although here the water is also going to be pretty hot. Likewise, smaller burrowing animals might essentially survive by switching to the nocturnal lifestyle while spending most time underground. And even though most of the surface might resemble something like this, essentially being a humongous desert, mostly because it's believed that the weather system is going to be completely disrupted by the existence of the supercontinent, essentially drying out forests completely and removing most of the vegetation from the surface, despite of this, some animals will probably still find a way. We obviously have no idea how or what sort of animals, but chances are they'll develop some strategies surviving for millions of years afterwards. And in this case, one intriguing question is, so who is going to dominate the planet? What sort of an organism? Is it going to be reptiles again? Is it going to be some new species that we cannot imagine? Or is it going to be something else that already exists and is just waiting for its time to shine on planet Earth? So definitely quite an intriguing study. At least in terms of understanding the future of planet Earth and where life on planet Earth might be headed. But I'm sure there's going to be another study that's going to be exploring this even further or potentially discover something else super interesting when it comes to the planet Earth in the next billion years. And in case you're wondering when we actually think all life is going to go extinct, current predictions based on how the sun changes over time suggest that the sun actually increases in luminosity by approximately 1% every 100 million years. And so in the next 1 billion years from now, it's going to be about 10% more luminous delivering so much heat to the surface that it actually has a very high chance to start what's known as the runaway greenhouse effect. Basically that's what happened to Venus billions of years ago. And so there's a slight chance that this might happen to Earth in the next 1 to 2 billion years from today. At least that's one of the predictions we currently have. None of this is currently super clear and all of this is just based on simulations and the current understanding of the planet, but all of this might change in the next few years. 
So once we know something else, I'll make sure to follow this up with the next video on the topic. Until then, check out some of the previous videos, including the video of what might happen to the universe in the next 1 trillion years, in the description below. In the meanwhile, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.